Coming up on episode 86 of Creative Writing, I'm talking with author Kevin Tumlinson about writing process and draft to digital. No matter how long you do it, there's always that continuous discovery about yourself. I can't go back to sleep, it's almost light. These restless thoughts have cut me up again tonight. Your job is to f- to arrange your life in such a way that you can come back and do the writing at a time when it's best for you. The point isn't to build a mailing list, it's to build a means of communicating with your readers. Hello and welcome to Create If Writing, the podcast for writers, bloggers, and creatives who want to build an online platform without being smarmy. So I'm your host, Kirsten Oliphant, and I'm really happy that you are listening today. I have a great interview with you that was really helpful for me as well as I hope it will be helpful for you with Kevin Tumlinson. Now, I met Kevin at the Smarter Artist Summit last year, which is put on by the guys uh, Johnny, Sean, and Dave from Sterling and Stone, who have a plethora of podcasts. If you search for Sterling and Stone, you will find them. Uh, And they put on a really fantastic conference for indie publishers and indie writers and indie authors. So it was really just for indie authors, but uh, people who are doing all three, indies really do all three, they're writing and they're publishing and marketing and doing all the things. So Kevin now works for, he did not then, but he does now work for draft to digital which is a company that has been kind of on my radar and on my to-do list. And in this interview, Kevin shares why I'm really silly for not having just gone to the website. <laughs> so you'll hear about that. And I think you will find if you're someone who's wanting to publish or is publishing your own books, you really want to know about this company. So Before we get into the interview, a couple of quick things. First of all, I want to thank our sponsor, ConvertKit. Now, I speak about them every week, and I'm trying to decide if I need to say something different every time other than ConvertKit rocks my world. It's my email service provider that makes things so simple for me to target different readers and subscribers to know where people came from to do content upgrades without having to like figure out a whole bunch of random stuff. I was in a Facebook group actually recently, and people were discussing how to do content upgrades for MailChimp and keep your list orderly and not have, you know, multiple subscribers that you're paying for. Because if you have people on different lists, even with the same email address and MailChimp, you're paying more or you're paying for those people for each list. So they count as two subscribers. And I was just thinking, how did I, I guess I just didn't do, I I really didn't, I didn't do content upgrades before ConvertKit because it was just a pain. So if you want to get a free month and try some of the fantastic features, you can go to createifwriting.com forward slash ConvertKit. If you want to find the show notes for today's interview, you can go to createifwriting.com forward slash 086 for episode 86. And I'm going to share kind of all kinds of great links for you, draft to digital, some things that uh, Kevin and I talk about, and also where you can find Kevin and get some of his free books, which is fantastic. And also a book I bought, like literally right before the interview, I was kind of going back over my notes and kind of looking more information about him up to make sure I knew what I was talking about or things I wanted to ask him. And I bought one of his books, The 30 Day Author, which is also a great resource. So I'll leave a link to that in the show notes. Now, in this episode, I want to just share some of the things that happened. First of all, I'm learning that recording a podcast with a baby in the house and a puppy in the house is insanity. And I planned for a time when both should have been asleep. And of course, that's not how it worked. So I edited out the big long pause in the middle of the interview. I was like, hey, I have to go get a baby now. (laughs) But I did sit and hold um, Piper for most of the interview. So if you hear any weird like breathing and things, that's the baby. Uh, the other thing that happened that was funny and thankfully happened before I hit record was that while we were talking, my boom stand that holds my mic onto my desk just like fell on the floor. So we had a literal mic drop and poor Kevin had no warning and it was very loud, I'm sure, because it, it literally fell like on the hardwood floor. Good thing before recording, right? So, uh, <laughs> Yes. Very exciting. Probably my most eventful interview to date. Probably he said it wasn't his worst, but you never know. All right. So now let's dive in and talk about indie publishing, writing process, and more with Kevin Tumlinson. Well, today on Create If Writing, I'm welcoming Kevin Tumlinson from, well, a lot of places that you'll hear about in just a second. Hey, Kevin, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. I couldn't decide which one to pick because you have a podcast and you write fiction and you have some nonfiction. I actually 
literally bought your book 20 minutes ago, The 30 oh, okay. Day Author. So uh, oh, you're the one. All right. <laughs> that's where that little commission came from. That was me this morning. Um, and you actually live a few miles from me. I realized this like a month ago. So really? Yes. And, I'm in Katie. We've never hung out. No, oh, I don't Katie? know. Yeah, we need to figure this out. So and you live in you an know, RV. That's right. So and Kate, if you live in an RV, you know, Katie. Because yes. <laughs> that's like the RV corridor of Houston. <laughs> they should have a sign that says that. That would be really great to replace they whatever. Should, they should. Yeah. I don't know what I don't know what the motto of Katie is, but RV corridor of Houston would be that would be ideal. I'm sure they would love that. Like the the <laughs> tourism just <laughs> whoever's in charge of that would be amazed. Well, I'm so glad that you took the time today. We really probably should have done this in person, although I don't know how to do the setup for recording. So this is better, but I'm waving to you over here in Katie, a couple That's miles cool. down That's the road. Cool. You know what we could do in person? We could we would sit across from each other at Starbucks, both of us on Skype, so that we could record. <laughs> <laughs> and then hearing all the background. That'd be perfect. <laughs> I get the uh, cafe noise going. Absolutely, yes. Well, I'd love to get started just kind of talking about your journey. And obviously not, you know, from birth necessarily, unless that's really relevant. But kind of how you uh, how you got to do what you're doing now. Like what's kind of the important bullet points on, on your journey of being an author and being a podcaster and also working at draft to digital You know, uh, Speaking to the author part of my life, I mean, I what's funny about uh, my journey to become an author is that I I spent so long um, completely clueless that I actually was already an author. Like uh, I did all these different jobs uh, in my career. You know, I I, I tell everyone. I, I mean, I I started writing professionally at, at twelve years old. I started getting paid to write at twelve years old. I wrote for local papers, uh, which eventually led to writing for larger papers and magazines and that sort of thing. Uh, but I, you know, the running joke is that I wrote my first book at five, hmm. <laughs> and uh, and it's true. And I mean, I wrote you know this this five page you know short story basically. But I mean, it was my book, and I treated it like that. And so there were all these little hints uh, growing up that I was going to be a writer, that I was going to be a storyteller. You know, I used to dictate stories into a, a tape recorder. That was, you know, before I got into radio, that was my pre-radio days. And then inevitably that led to podcasting, you know. So <laughs> the uh, the stuff that kind of got me to, to being an author was sort of subtle in my life. Hmm. I spent a lot of time. Um, I was one of those. Okay. The, what's crazy is I kept writing and I kept doing all this stuff on the side. And then I'd take a completely different job and go for a completely different career with this idea that one day I'd like to write for a living, you know, regardless of the fact that I actually was writing all the time. And uh, eventually I, I kind of caught up with uh, the rest of my brain and I started writing for money. And uh, uh, that was it. I mean, it, I, I hit the uh, bookshelves, uh, as it were, around 2008 with my first book. And uh, that was it. I mean, I, I had... Uh, I had submitted and I'd queried agencies and, and uh, publishers for years trying to get something picked up. And I, I occasionally would get some really great feedback. And it was just always a sort of, you know, it's not right for us, kid, kind of thing. And I had a growing frustration with that. So that, that made me gravitate toward um, indie publishing because, frankly, I just I, I like to own my business. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not particularly fond of someone else owning, you know, my work. So that was just. You know, that's sort of the short version of that journey, I guess, to authordom. <laughs> that's really exciting. Well, and I feel like a lot of writers have been writing forever, and they'll say that. And my first uh, my first book was, I think I was eight, and I wrote it in a little Hello Kitty notebook that yeah. had, like, rainbow-colored pages. <laughs> it was, like, yeah. a full yeah. novel, and it was terrible. But, I was you in know, a big chief, uh, big chief notebook. I had uh, five pages of Big Chief paper. I wrote with one of those big fat pencils. You know? That's so funny. I think I used a pen and I felt really grown up because like at, at eight, you don't really get to use pen. You're not really allowed right. so much. Okay. So I, my question is because of all the different things that you do, how do you, I, I don't like the word balance, but how do you manage to do the podcasting? And I know you write fiction and nonfiction. How does that work in terms of getting all those things done? There's that, uh, that principle. I think it's from like seven habits or something that you put first things first, you know? Um, and so, you know, each day when I get up, I have, I have routines and I, I, I walk the dog, I do the dishes, I get cleaned up and ready for the day. And then I sit down and I have a period of writing that, um, that hopefully won't be interrupted. 
But I mean, basically what, what I do is fall back on habits. Uh, I know that every week I got to knock out a podcast episode for, for Wordslinger. I know that I'm going to have to, you know, hook up with Justin Sloan to do a uh, creative writing career, you know? So we schedule those things, uh, he and I, so that makes that easier. And I, I rely on my calendar <laughs> and specifically I rely on the calendar app on, uh, you know, the Apple calendar app, you know, uh, which syncs up with Google and all the other calendars I, I have in my life. But, uh, if it's not on the calendar, it doesn't get done. Okay. And I can prove that because <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that somehow didn't make it on the calendar and never got done. So I actually sit down and schedule out like, all right, at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning, I'm writing this post. And at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, I'm, you know, I'm working on editing this piece or whatever. And uh, that's how I do it. I, I've started using recently um, the Reminders app, which mm. allows you to set, you know, you can schedule things, uh, schedule it to remind you of things. And uh, it's it works kind of like a checklist. Uh, so I'm experimenting with transitioning to that and using it to schedule things. The only downside to that is that those events, now that they're not in my calendar, uh, some of my other tools, like my scheduling software, <laughs> um, they won't know that there's an event going on at that time. And so I end up double booking. So I'm working on that. <laughs> It'd be nice I don't if, know where that's going to go yet. It'd be nice if there was something that did all of those things and maybe there is there or someone's working. Is. It's probably like yeah. a paid tool. They're always the, like all the things. I'm like, this yeah. would make my life easier. It's like uh, in this world of a like month. hyper entrepreneurism, somebody has created that and it's, you know, it's part of their thousand dollar elite package or something that you have to pay each month. But, uh, I, yeah, I would love to have a tool that does that. And, and I'm sure you'll get a hundred people, uh, emailing you to say, look, this, this app and this website. <laughs> so pass those along, I guess. Yeah, please. Yeah. Yes. So if you're listening and you have like the perfect app that will help with uh, all those different things, let yeah. us know and I'll let Kevin know afterwards. Yeah. Um, I've just, it all been... comes down to calendars though. I mean, I, that the calendar yeah. is my best friend and, uh, I forget where I picked this up. I know Nick Thacker, one of my, one of my writing partners and podcast partners, um, gave me the advice, but I don't remember where he got it, but it was, you know, basically that idea that if it isn't on the calendar, it doesn't get done. And, uh, once I had that kind of in my head, I ran with it and it's helped me, you know, and it's such a mundane answer, you know, like you really want to hear me say, I have this, you know, seven point system for keeping my life in balance, but <laughs> the reality no, I is don't want to hear that. I really am so <laughs> tired of like the seven point system. I know, and right? Formulas. Everyone's got one of those, you know, Every, why does everything have to be such a, you know, a brand new revelatory thing? Like you, you, you've just in, reinvented, you know, turned everything on its ear. I mean, why can't we just fall back on the humble calendar? I love that. And I, I think people will enjoy hearing that too because it's refreshing, right? Like you don't yeah. have to buy the next shiny thing. I mean, you can, and if people have those suggestions for something that really would make your life easier. But I've tried some of those tools that I, you know, you pay for that it will make scheduling for your social media easier and all these things. Mm -hmm. And very few of them I feel like are really worth the money. Other, I mean, I kind of am like, I was paying for one and I was like, really? I'm paying so I can be lazy. It's not saving me that much time. I could really do it. And it's enough money a month that it's just, right. no. Like, I'm such a penny pincher. I'm kind of well, like, no, I can't do that. My problem was always that I'm, I'm now I'm paying for a service that is literally just one more thing I have to do. Yes. So, you know, if you're going to pay for something that schedules your social media posts, which I, you know, I do. I have yeah. tools. But if you're going to do that, now you got to go load all that stuff up. And, uh, you know, like Buffer and Hootsuite, those those are great tools. But, you know, they're actually one more step in my process now. That's true because you, you do know? have to schedule. And I think I right. got a free month of Edgar a while ago. Um, and, you know, everybody raves about it. But I realized right. I didn't even schedule one thing because I realized it's like this big content library, right? Right. And I was like, I don't have time because that would mean I have to go make a spreadsheet of all of my blog posts. And then <laughs> really I need just an assistant. That's <laughs> right. Right. I will recommend. I'm going to recommend this because I interviewed the guy who created this. But there's a tool out there called Social Jukebox. I use that. I love that okay. tool, actually. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a fantastic tool. Because you can – not only can you just – I mean, I, I literally, ever, after every podcast, I go in and I put my what I call my interview card, um, which is like the graphic I create for the post. Yep. And a quote. And I link – you know, I tag the, the person. I put that in there. And so, you know, forever, that will uh, periodically repost that, which you can do – 
on Twitter with no problem um, because stuff just churns through so fast. Yes. Uh, but what it does is it, it puts more eyes on it, brings more people in. But, you know, it, it's automated. I don't ever have to touch it again. And uh, they also have those little jukeboxes of quotes and things that you can cycle through. And it gets pretty good engagement. So, you know, of all the automated social media tools I've found, that's the one I like the most. <laughs> I do really like that. And I need to actually put that in my workflow because what happened is I set up. I spent this one night, like, setting all this stuff up. But then I forgot to go back in for every new post and add things. And so right. it just is cycling through however many I put in that night and none of the new stuff is in there. So right. note to self, add this to your workflow. Right. Well, and I am looking at getting a VA to do that that part for me. Yes, that's that's <laughs> really what I need. Like I don't want to pay more tools. I'd rather pay a person to like use or even the free tool. Like I use Hootsuite, but the free plan because that's all I need. You know, I don't need some right, of the power right. – I don't need a seventy nine ninety nine dollar a month tool, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so, in any case, do you have like out of the things that you do, you know, is fiction your number one in terms of what you're passionate about, or does it kind of change as far as what you're really excited about? You know, that's a that's the perfect question for this exact moment in my life because fiction for the longest time really was that that thing that just drove me, and I actually had to come to that that realization, you know, a couple of years ago, I was actually at the, uh, it was, it would have been the very first iteration of the smarter artist summit that mm -hmm. the uh, self-publishing podcast guys do. It was the colonist summit. Um, and I, you know, they had this hot seat where you could talk to the group and talk to Sean and Johnny and Dave and, you know, tell them what you're doing. And I had this realization that I was on the completely wrong path. I was focusing on nonfiction when I really just wanted to be a fiction writer, you know, so for the longest time, that's driven me. But then I realized I have more interests and more passions than simply writing fiction. I did need to focus on fiction at that time to build up that library, build up my skills and, you know, get that million words of practice in, that sort of thing. Um, I needed that. And in order, in order to learn about the business and learn about myself, that had to be my focus at that time. But, I, you know, I have more interests than that. I love writing nonfiction pieces. You know, I started ra recently writing for uh, posting on Medium, uh, which oh, yeah. I think is an incredible tool. Like if you're not if you're not already using it and they by the way, I have discovered and verified you can post fiction on Medium. So cool. Uh, it's a it's an all in one venue for me. Right. It's like Wattpad for grownups. <laughs> and uh, I uh, I love writing about you know, the publishing industry. I love writing motivational pieces. Uh, I'm a, I'm a Christian. I'm very spiritual. So I'll sometimes write some, I, I I'm saying I'll sometimes do this. I plan to do this. I've posted twice <laughs> on medium so far, but, um, you know, the, the range of what I can produce now is, is much broader. And that, that medium is a great place to uh, do it because you can get a lot more exposure for your work. You know? that, that's true. Are you reposting things that are already on your blog or are you doing totally new stuff for media? I'm just right, curious. Right now I'm just doing uh, totally new stuff, okay. but I am considering taking some blog posts that um, have passed their prime and, uh, and getting them out there. Um, one thing that I, I discovered a while back is that I had to, I had to change the nature of my blog uh, because I was writing all these nonfiction pieces, but everyone who comes to my site, you know, is, and gets on my newsletter is pretty much, uh, there for my fiction. <laughs> mm. So I was writing to uh, authors and I was writing to, you know, I was writing all these nonfiction pieces and no one cared. Yeah. Uh, and then I started writing short stories on my blog and people loved them. So, and I'm, That's so I'm cool. way behind on that, by the way, I need to probably get back on that. <laughs> well, I think you have a lot of other irons in the fire. So, you know, yeah, I, that's do. Okay. I collect <laughs> irons, I collect <laughs> irons and I collect fires <laughs> and I wear a lot of hats. So you've got the irons. I've got the hats. So. That's right. Well, <laughs> that's what does right. the process look like for you in terms of writing fiction versus nonfiction? Is it the same process? Do you feel like you're accessing a different part of your brain? Do you write in different spaces or is it kind of just writing is writing for you? Yeah. I'm, I'm, it's funny, no matter how long you do this. And I mean, I've been doing this for decades uh, writing professionally for decades. And, uh, no matter how long you do it, there's always that, that continuous discovery about yourself as mm. a, as a writer. Um, I do my fiction in the mornings cause that's when I work best for the longest time. I tried to cram everything in the mornings cause that's when I'm uh, most creative and most energetic, but I've, I've somewhat recently come to the, uh, I've discovered, we'll say that, uh, 
you know, some of the things I write are better written in the afternoons. Hmm. So nonfiction in particular, um, especially if it's something I'm very knowledgeable about. If it's, if it's something I have to research, I, I, I kind of need to do that, you know, during the mornings because that's when I'm the most alert. Uh, so yeah, so there's this shift and, and where I write actually does matter. I used to love to write at Barnes and Noble and now I can't write there to save my life because it's, it's too distracting. There are too many books I want to read. There's too many, um, too many, uh, young girls, uh, talking about their uh, weekend, that sort of thing. It's just too distracting. (laughs) (laughs) And so Starbucks, though, we're still good. Uh, Starbucks and I, so I, I'll, I hit all the, there are like, you know, you know, the area. I mean, there's like 50 of them around me within, you know, five minutes drive. Uh, very important when you're on a Vespa, by the way. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> I can has imagine. To be <laughs> less than 15 minutes away. Yes. Uh, Especially given our weird weather here in Houston. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Extreme well, heat, it, cold for one day. Yesterday we had <laughs> tornadoes. Did you have tornadoes? <laughs> we had yeah, well, we got this tornado alert. Now I didn't get one. Uh, oh, well, I, no, too no bad for you. Me. Good thing there was no actual right. tornado. So I'm all like, <laughs> I'm going to put the awnings out. I'm going to, you know, <laughs> I'm going to be outside all day. And, uh, and uh, you know, of course, there's somewhere a house is flying by, and I had no idea. But, <laughs> yeah, the what I'm discovering is there are different parts of, of, of my writer brain that require that have different requirements. Hmm. And even to the point of what I'm drinking – Okay, so that's interesting. That's really fascinating. Yeah, it is. It, it okay. Look, I'm studying myself. Okay, I love myself. I'm going to study myself. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> I I write fiction to coffee. I write nonfiction to green tea. Wow, which is, which is interesting, right? And uh, everything else in between, all the copywriting and that sort of thing, is generally whatever is at hand. Okay. Uh, generally coffee, but you know, co- copywriting is a whole different uh, mindset, and. Uh, I was raised on co- copywriting and coffee. So, I, you know, that's just going to be the way it is. That sounds but like a book title, by the way. Copywriting and coffee? Yeah. All right, dibs. Just write that down. <laughs> I am writing. Okay. Um, in, in, in full disclosure, I'm writing a book. I'm, I'm tinkering with a book that is meant to be a, a copy, a, an indie author's guide to copywriting. Well, there you go. You've got and your I title. I had now. not yet that's come a up freebie. with the title. <laughs> <laughs> So there you go. This is why we talk to other people, right? So you can get ideas. And it's okay if you throw that one out. But if you do use it, I may be calling for a uh, commission check of some kind. Why not? Yeah. You can call. Uh, Yeah. You might conveniently be out all the time. Well, I find that really interesting that it it works so differently for you. And, you know, I'd I'd be curious and people are going to have to, you know, I've got a Facebook group and I need to, um, I won't add you without permission, but you should hop in there. And when the episode goes live, we can have a discussion about this because I'd I want to know what other people think. For me, um, you know, I've said this multiple times in the show, but I feel like, you know, I have an MFA in fiction, but I am on a long hiatus from fiction because I need to go to a place that I can't go to when I have little kids in the house. And I know other people can, and I envy those people. Um, And I do a lot of work. It's not that I can't find the hours. It's that my head has to go kind of live in that space. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't happen here. So even when I have... A few hours, like even in this interview, like I already had to stop it. It's edited out so people don't hear, but I had to stop and go get a crying baby who I'm now holding in my lap. You know, this is the nature of my work. Now I can do nonfiction. I can do podcasting. I can do all kinds of stuff, but fiction, it just makes me angry at everybody when I get interrupted. And so, um, it's just on pause, like a big pause (laughs) that, which is, you know, here's the thing. Okay. Just like any other business. I mean, you, you, sometimes you got to do the work even when it sucks. Right. Yeah. But yeah. That's okay. That's not, that should never be the norm though. Like yeah. I, yeah. I, I had this conversation with my wife this morning, um, who is brilliant and I don't listen to her, you know, 90% of the time, but, <laughs> uh, which is why I'm always, uh, struggling to keep up. But she, you know, I was telling her I, yesterday, I wanted to write this, this post and I've been working on something, you know, I've been tinkering with various ideas all weekend, you know? And uh, there's this post I wanted to write for Medium that I couldn't figure out what what I wanted to say, right? I just knew I wanted to write something. And I knew I, a particular tone I was trying to strike, but I just couldn't get there. And, um, and, you know, this was part of my revelation about writing that sort of thing in the afternoons because, you know, I woke up and I decided, all right, I'm going to put my fiction aside for the morning um, and put my words on this nonfiction piece because it's important to me. And I, I struggled with it all weekend. I didn't get any work done. So I'm going to 
I'm going to use my writing time to write this piece. And I got nowhere. And it depressed me, right? Um, so I'm sitting here trying to force myself to do it. And then uh, eventually I get a few words on the page and it's like, you know, I'm just crawling through this thing. But I, I made progress. Wasn't happy with it, but I made progress. And then, at, you know, four o'clock in the afternoon, I sat down and looked at it again with a cup of green tea and uh, boom, I, I, you know, I wrote it. Hmm. And uh, so I don't think you should have to torture yourself to get the work done, but you sometimes do have to kind of fight through to at least get a start, you know, yeah. and then you can come back to it. Um, you know, when you do have the opportunity to, to go sit at Starbucks or whatever, you know, now it's, you can readdress it. I don't know. I may be butchering this idea, but a, the point I was really trying to make was, you know, sometimes you do have to push through yeah. and, and that's difficult. Um, but you know, it's your business and you, you got to think of it that way. Uh, but then try, you know, the best approach is always to try to stack the, the deck in your favor. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you write better at, at a cafe and at four o'clock in the afternoon, then try to arrange your life so that you can be at that cafe. And that's, that's really the point. Um, I know everyone's busy. Everyone's got kids. Everyone's got pets. Everyone's got day jobs. You know, there's a million different things that can distract you from the writing. Mm -hmm. And you, your job isn't always to to try to cram your work into those wee hours, at, you know, between yeah. four and six. Your job is to f to arrange your life in such a way that you can come back and do the writing at a time when it's best for you. Yeah, I agree. And I think the process – you know, we've kind of touched on this, like hearing about your nonfiction versus fiction and, and kind of in talking about this, like there's everybody has a different process and you have to figure it out. And it isn't like it's good right. to hear that you're still figuring yourself out, like you're still yeah. figuring your process. And I'm sure it changes, too. And, it and when situations change, you're living in an RV now. So I imagine that whatever your process was, you know, we talked about this you know, before we start recording for podcasting, even like you're, you know, you don't have a studio anymore because you're in right. an RV, like things, right, right. you have to adjust to the seasons and situations of life. Oh. And you also have to learn how you work. And so um, right. for me, like I've continually struggled over the last, you know, really, I, I, I wrote fiction, I guess, until my oldest was like, you know, a year or so old. And then I realized it was just so frustrating for me um, to not be able to work. And I try, I kept coming back every year. I'm like, okay, is this just an excuse? Let's go ahead and try to plug in, you know, here are the times, or I'll just take these hours and do some fiction. And I just end up frustrated and unable to do what I want to do every time, no matter how, right. you know, like, okay, I'm doing office hours. And sometimes those are office hours between 10 PM and midnight, you know, right, right, <laughs> and then right. somebody starts teething. And so it's just this constant state of frustration, which is not good for creative work, but it's been great for me, even though I hate that. And, and I do keep coming back and trying to make sure, okay, let me make sure I'm not just afraid. You know, I'm not afraid yeah, of failure. Yeah. I'm not afraid because it's really hard to come back when you take time off of anything, I think. But, um, yeah. every time I'm, I'm pretty much confirmed that, you know, for the next few years until my kids are at least in school, all of them enough time that I can have some mental space because I want to enjoy my family and I enjoy the other writing that I do. And I enjoy the podcasting enough that no, it's not fiction, but maybe fiction is not my first passion. Maybe creating is my passion. And so yeah. whatever form that's taking right now, that's great. But it is hard. I mean, I have to give myself permission to step back, but I also have to, like I said, confront you know, my reality and see, okay, is this fear? Is this excuses? Or is this a genuine, like a genuine right. thing that I need to listen to and kind of back off of? Yeah. Yeah. And I think you've hit on a pretty important point, by the way, because we, a lot of times we sort of decide, um, well, this is what I am. I'm a fiction mm. writer, for example, I'm a fiction novelist and, um, we, it's good to focus, you know, yeah. I mean, focus is how you get ahead quickly. And that's what focus is for. Um, it, for moving ahead at a, fa at a, a more rapid rate. But the, the truth is that a lot of times, you know, we have to kind of occasionally step back and reconsider, um, is this really what we're after? Is this really the dream hmm. or is it just one version of it that, that we kind of sort of glommed onto? And, uh, I mean, and I mean, as far as dreams go, like I was going to mention this earlier, like I, f I feel like I should, I should clarify that, um, I'm the whole RV thing because <laughs> the <laughs> RV thing is a lifestyle choice that my wife and I made recently. So we could travel while I write and publish, uh, not a, we, we went broke because I'm a writer. 
<laughs> yeah, the starving so, writer. Yeah, I feel, I like, feel like I always have to clarify that a little. I feel like it's more of a given now because so many, I feel like it's yeah. more of a thing now to have a travel lifestyle or, you know, I would yeah, have clarified yeah. that. But I think it's one of those things now more more people are doing is the online world and self-publishing. And whether, whether you're self-publishing or you're kind of an online entrepreneur, like people are able to have a lot more freedom, which is so cool. Yeah. Um, and I'd love to talk now and kind of shift from kind of the creative side to the nuts and bolts side of things, because I think yeah. it's important to, to do both. Because if you do the creative work, then now you're, you know, we have so many options, but self-publishing is what I want to talk about today. Right, right. Um, and, you know, I'd love to know, well, I don't know if we want to start with, because you work for draft to digital so I, right. I don't know if we want to start with that or just, maybe I'll just throw out the general question. Like, you finished <laughs> a manuscript, you know, what... What right. is next in the process of, of towards self-publishing? I mean, okay, my personal process is I have a street team, or some people will call them beta readers. I, I like to divide those two ideas, beta readers and street teams. Mm -hmm. um, the beta readers to me are the folks who get the book first and give you uh, almost like the developmental edit notes. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you lost a character in chapter six you know, or whatever. <laughs> um and uh, then my street team is the group I hand it to immediately after the manuscript's done. Um, and I've gotten that feedback. I, I give it to the street team and I, I let them read it and give me, you know, notes on you've got a million typos in chapter one and, you know, all the fixes, right? Yeah. So uh, that's a relatively new process, by the way, for the for people who've read my work and like, you know, your street team's not working out, pal. Um my, my street team is amazing and they're helping me polish manuscripts as we go. <laughs> Earlier work, I hired editors, sometimes not always the best editors apparently, but uh, you know, every now and then you, you come across somebody who gets really offended that you have a typo or a comma in the right, wrong place. Um, so whatever. But that's my, that's my immediate process. And then um, I take it to, uh, you know, draft to digital, just like I would tell anyone else. And, um, I, you know, I use KDP because right now for the moment, draft to digital doesn't publish to Amazon. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's, we're, we're trying to change that. Um, we're talking to lots of people about that. Um, but draft to digital allows me to, to, it's an aggregate service. Okay. So all these different ebook vendors that are out there and retailers, um, we connect with those guys and we make special relationships with them. And we're, hmm. we're pretty good at that. And then when you upload your book, you can choose which vendors you want to uh, send the book to. You don't have to send them to everybody. So if you want to go direct to Kobo, for example, you can send your book to everybody but Kobo. And then um, uh, you get to track your sales. And we got a really cool sales dashboard, really clean, really easy. The easiest one I've ever used. Let's just put it that way. And I've used plenty, but it's just the simplest, cleanest interface I've ever used. Um, and we, uh, you know, you can, we can automate everything from converting the book. I actually use draft to digital to convert the manuscript that I send to KDP. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> because it's clean, you know, it's like, uh, it, rather than me have to, you know, futz around with it in, in Scrivener, which I don't use Scrivener anymore, but I mean, Ulysses will convert a book to an ebook, and uh, I like to use Vellum to make things look pretty. But I, ultimately, when it goes to Amazon, it went through Draft to Digital first, and I'm able to automate a few things like you know all my front and end matter, all you know the about page, uh, the about the author page if I want, um, the also buy page. All that stuff can be automated, and you can deselect that; it doesn't have to be part of your manuscript. And so that conversion is all free um, and you don't have to use draft to digital for distribution in order to use that. You can just convert your manuscript and upload it directly if you want. Oh, wow. So I've been doing this myself all this time and could have been right. doing it for free over. Great. Right. Great. <laughs> <laughs> right. And let me tell you something. It, it, and this is tricky because some, there are people who like certain things uh, about layout that aren't always optimized okay but what draft to digital does is pretty awesome is when when you get that manuscript back as an epub or a mobi it's um it's it works on every device because we test it cool right so and it's all automated uh so that you don't have to wait for anyone else you just upload it and in a few seconds it's it's converted uh and then you can download 
there's a, a, a screen in there where you can download like three different versions of the book, including like a PDF. You can, uh, you can upload that anywhere you like after that. Now, if you go to the next step, <laughs> you can set your price and you can choose your regions and you can choose your vendors and all that stuff gets, you know, handled for you. You can specify prices for a, a particular vendor if you want, which isn't really recommended, but some people want to do that. Yeah. You've got lots of control and then all that's automated. We, it sends it out to the vendor and it's all on us after that. And uh, that takes care of a lot of headaches. You know, I mean, I, I, I basically I'm trading a 15% cut of my royalty for the freedom to not have to worry about, you know, five or six different uh, retailers. <laughs> yeah, I don't have to yeah. worry about their submission guidelines. I don't have to worry about, you know, uh, 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 tracking sales. I don't have to worry about any of that. All of it gets taken care of for me. So it's a convenience fee for me. That's so. amazing. Yeah, you sold me right there. I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> it's very easy. I mean, it's – and I know that – there are these arguments and I, I don't fight back against any of this. Okay. Uh, but I mean, there are people who have their own philosophy, about, philosophy about how things should work. And, you know, some of the, the complaints I guess are, you know, well, it's a 15% cut and that adds up, which is true. Um, but it's also completely automated. Yeah. So rather than having to say, do all that work yourself, which takes you away from marketing and, and writing and all the things that are important as an author, or pay someone else to go do it, you know, you're, it's all done for you, uh, with a couple of clicks. And then, um, we also, you know, benefits are we pay each month. So if we've got money, if we get money for your book, you get it on the next pay period. I mean, mm -hmm. that's guaranteed and we do it every time and we don't withhold anyone's money, uh, unless there's a problem. And we've had that come up <laughs> where someone refused to fill out the tax documents or they refused to, uh, they just didn't, they won't, they won't play by the rules. Well, that's the only way you can end up not getting your money is if you won't play by the rules and they're not our rules. They're the rules of the vendors. Yeah. So you wouldn't get your money anyway. So <laughs> we will just basically give it back. Uh, but anyway, it's, it's what, it, what's great about that whole service. And one of the reasons I was attracted to the company is that it's all geared around helping the the indie author succeed. Mm. And it's, you hear a million different companies say that. And I, I, I now I'm entrenched in this company. So, you, you know, should take my word for what it is. But I mean, the only reason I went to work for them is because they were like that. Yeah. Because <laughs> I didn't have to. You know, yeah. I mean, I don't have to work for anybody. I could, I could continue doing what I was doing. I was doing just fine. Um, so I don't have to work for draft to digital, but I do it because they're in line with my mission, which is help as many people discover that they can be authors and become authors and build that author business as I possibly can. And these guys are right on top of that. So. No, I think that's amazing. And I feel like you do cut out with, with kind of what you're saying, all the questions that I usually get and all the places where I am usually kicking something or up at yeah. 3 a.m., super frustrated. It has to do with like the things about formatting and getting the different files. And often yeah. what that results in is me just putting out to one place, even though I'd rather go wide and distribute my books, multiple right. platforms. Um, I don't always because you have to go to each one it's, and yeah, do different things just, and you have to have another format. And it's yeah. just kind of like as a comparison in social media, like this has been a frustration that's really weirdly similar is every social media platform has a different optimal image size, right? right. And so right. this I've got down pat. I can do that in about five seconds using PicMonkey or Canva. Um, right. But I will go and resize. I actually use PicMonkey for this part of it. Resize the same image like four ways so that I know I've got, you know, the featured thing for Facebook. I've got a Pinterest pin. I've got a featured, you know, square that'll show up on my blog in the big list right. of blog posts. And that doesn't take long for me. But formatting a book is this giant headache. And most people that I know who are doing their own work just don't want to do it. And they get trapped at that point. And then they pay somebody on Fiverr and then everything sucks. <laughs> Yeah, everything so. <laughs> goes sideways. Yeah, and uh, th that was one of the problems. Like one of our founders uh, w w is an indie author, and that's why this started. You know, hmm. the whole company started because he's he was fed up with that kind of thing. Um, yeah, and there is this tendency to just you know, okay, Amazon is is my venue. You know, that's where my audience is. There's that tendency because it is so simple. 
And also Amazon, you know, if you're exclusive to Amazon, you can get some perks. And um, I always surprise people because I tell I tell new authors, if you don't have an audience and you've only got one book, you should definitely go with a KDP Select. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Until you build an audience and get more books. And then you should, you know, move over, transition over and go wide. But um, the the whole idea there was to take away the headaches of, of hitting up these other vendors, but also make you look good, you know, make your work good. The, the whole, uh, ebook formatting thing is, has been huge because now, now everybody could do it. All you need is your word document, you know, just, or, or whatever. I mean, whatever you write in, you'll still have to export that as a word document, but that's every tool does that. So you just drop it in and it, it finds all the chapters for you. If something's wrong, you contact customer service. And the great thing about draft digitals customer service is every time you reach out to them, it's an actual human being and they will help you fix your problem. And I promise you, that's what we're there for. That's fantastic. <laughs> like, it's the coolest customer service I've ever encountered. Cause you know, you, you don't get a bunch of form emails that are just random instructions that have nothing to do with you. And you're not, you're not pointed to a forum and you're not pointed to an FAQ. You might be. I mean, you, you, the customer yeah. service folks might say, hey, look, there's a whole FAQ about this topic, but uh, they're going to work with you to fix your problem. So if you're having a formatting issue, we've had people who submitted a book and the chapters were all screwed up. You know, the immediate first reaction, because you're so used to Amazon and everyone else is to get pissed off and go on Twitter, <laughs> you know? And, <laughs> Never uh, done that. Never ever done that. <laughs> which I understand that <laughs> instinct, okay? But, you know, and then someone, probably me, uh, will see that and say, look, contact customer service. And within, usually within 24 hours, depending on when you hit them up. If you hit them up at midnight on Friday night, it's going to be Monday before anybody talks to you, okay? Yeah. Everyone's got to sleep. Um, but the, you know, usually within 24 hours or so, you you can get these things resolved. You know, the occasional really thorny problem that's just weird might take a little longer, but most of the problems we deal with are dealt with quickly right away and with a smile and everybody walks away happy. You know, I, I, I'm always kind of shocked actually when I, if someone pops up and they've got some sort of negative opinion about draft to digital, it's always something so random. I've never considered, hmm. you know, um, and it's so rare <laughs> yeah. that, that it just stands out. And then usually if I reach out to that person within a couple of days, they're our biggest fan again. Hmm. And so I've never seen another company like that. That's I'm really a big neat. fanboy. Obviously. Of, of drafted obviously. I really am. I, 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 you know, I, I, I reached out to them a couple of years, you know, let's see, about a year or so ago uh, through Dan Wood. You know, I had him on my show. I met him at a couple of events. And, uh, you know, I reached out and said, Hey, look, if, if you guys are ever in need of someone to do some marketing work for you, just, just let me know. I've got a business that, you know, I do that. And, uh, they reached out to me, uh, unbeknownst to me, they, they were listening in. Like every time I mentioned them on my show or any other podcast I did, you know, Dan was pointing that out to them. So hmm. they were, they were following me. They were listening to me and, uh, and it just, you know, that ultimately led to them reaching out and saying, you know, we'd love for you to take over marketing for us. And I, I was happy to, cause it, and I should really make it clear. I had a business, <laughs> I still yeah. have a business, yeah. but I, and I did not need an income and I did not need a job. I, I, I loved everything these guys were doing, the whole mission of what they're doing so much that I was willing to, to jump right on board. And to me, that's the best testimonial I can give. <laughs> well, I think it's great to hear. I mean, you know, I like to hear how the company was started by somebody solving their own problem. And, right, right. you know, hearing that you went from being a huge fan to working there because you liked it. Like all of those things are, you know, good things for authors to hear as they're trying to navigate the parts of the water that we as authors often don't like navigating, which yeah, are like yeah. a lot of this tech stuff. So I appreciate hearing that. And definitely I'm going to go get on there because it's been one of those things like that's on my mental to-do list, like yeah. figure out draft to digital. And obviously you know, it's much simpler than <laughs> I'm always surprised when I hear that. people say things like that, like figure out draft to digital because it is uh, honestly, here's, here's how you figure out draft to digital. Go to the website, click on the, you know, the register for an account. And if you have a question, contact customer service, hmm. but you're probably not going to have a question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, over the weekend, a, a, 
a woman, uh, an author actually approached us on Facebook to say that she didn't know where to upload her book, which surprised everybody because uh, it's right. It's the very first thing you see. But what I've determined and what we what we kind of discovered was she was she was sort of overcomplicating that process. Hmm. Like because you're so used to when you get on KDP, you got to go through three or four different pages before you even, you know, or three or four different sections or something before you even upload your book. Yep. And then it has to be approved, <laughs> you know, like it, before it's before they'll even let you alter any information about the book. The book has to be approved. Well, you know, that's not the way it is. Drafts digital. You can upload your book. You don't have to publish it. You can change the metadata about it anytime you want. You can change the cover. <laughs> you know, you can set up pre-orders. There's all these things that you can do um, before it even goes live, before it's even, quote, approved. Um, and people aren't used to that. So I think the tendency is to overcomplicate it. Yeah. And you really do make everything so simple that, you know, it, it catches people by surprise, I think. That's really neat. Well, you know, it's kind of like we were talking <laughs> earlier about, like, the, you know, trying to use a new tool and you have to spend some time figuring out the tool. So it sounds right. like the uh, the learning curve on Draft Digital is about zero. So let's yeah. all go now after that's your homework from <laughs> the end of this podcast is to go, if this sounds good to you, I mean, if this, some of you may be like, no, I've got my process down. I don't need this. But for somebody like me, right. I've already put out a bunch of things and it was a pain in the butt. And I just did it myself because I'm stubborn and don't want to pay people. And um, yes, I'm learning the value of my time. And when it's you know, a good idea to pay people and when it's not. Right. And I think paying for a service like this where, you know, even if I'm just doing the free thing and converting my files, that's saving me time. But if I right. want to go ahead, because I'm not distributing my stuff everywhere because I don't have the time. It's on that long to-do list. Underneath, right. figure out draft to digital. There's <laughs> put all my books <laughs> in all the places. Yeah. So um, yeah. that's really good to hear. So thank you for giving us kind of, of a – kind of overview of that. And I think that will really be helpful to a lot of people because I get that question all the time. I finished my book, now what? And I'm like, um, there's some blogs, you know, and podcasts yeah, yeah. and some places, but um, I can now point them to you guys. So yeah. And, and uh, you know, of course, if they have questions at all, you know, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook. Uh, there's a blog that I am uh, actively keeping up now. Um, that was one of the things I took on when I when I joined the team, and uh, there's lots of advice in there about everything from you know for uh, easy ebook formatting to marketing your work. Um, this we're in the middle of a series right now about marketing 101 for authors. So uh, go check that out and reach out to us. And when I say that, I don't. The thing that pops into my head is like you know everyone says reach out to us, and then you get into an automated process. You and I were discussing an author before we start recording who has basically that set up, you know, <laughs> yeah. he says, reach out to me. And then you get an automated email that hints that, you know, that email is your, your email is going to be in his inbox and that's pretty much where it's going to stay. Yep. But, uh, the, the reality of draft digital. And one of the things I've always loved about them is if you reach out, you're going to get an answer. That's fantastic. And if you don't reach out again. I mean, sometimes we miss things. So that's fine. But <laughs> if you reach out, someone's going to talk to you and someone wants to talk to you and wants to help you because everyone in that business, I've never, I've worked in software companies before. Okay. I've never worked for a software developer. I've never worked for anyone that was so um, obsessed with figuring out ways to help authors be successful. Hmm. I've, I've just or, or help their clientele be successful. I've just never worked in a business like that before. And uh, these guys are definitely hundred uh, percent legit on that. So Excellent. reach out and we'll help you. <laughs> Good to know. Well, I have a feeling you'll be getting a lot of people and I will definitely be recommending um, you guys and also your book, which I said, I just downloaded, but the 30 day author. Um, and I wanted to kind of hit on something you you talked about there, but I and I wanted to kind of end up here, which is to talk about the marketing piece. So we've talked okay. about writing process. We've talked about kind of the formatting, uploading, distribution, which is all packaged up really nicely in draft to digital. But <laughs> what does that look like for you? Like, what are some of the tips maybe that you could leave people with for our marketing? Because that's the other place where I feel like authors really struggle. Yeah, I mean, you know, there is the 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 sort of baseline advice of, you know, you want to build a uh, mailing list, right? Yep. Uh, what people mean, by the way, when they say that isn't exactly the mailing list. What they're talking about is building your platform. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are authors who are phenomenally successful who do not have mailing lists. 
And that should not surprise people because the point isn't to build a mailing list per se. It's to uh, build a means of communicating with your readers. And some people do that through blogs and some people do that through social media. Um, you know, use medium. Uh, I think it's probably going to be a great tool for that. Any go, the trick to marketing is go where your readers are, are where they're going to hang out and, uh, and become one of them, become a member of that community. Um, marketing, you know, I, there are several adages that I have regarding what marketing is that of course are never going to occur to me in the middle of this interview, but will occur, occur to me immediately after we hang up. But <laughs> the, one of the ones that I do know is that marketing is about increasing your odds, hmm. which I never hear anyone talk about, but it is the point of marketing. You, the, the goal of marketing your books, if we're going to get that granular and specific is to increase the odds that someone will pick up that book. Okay. So in that light, you need to start thinking in terms of how do I improve my odds? How do I get the book in front of the right person at the right time? You know, where is that person going to hang out? What are they like? You know, what are they, how do they dress? What music do they like? You know, create that user persona, um, which you can formalize by writing down, or you can just, you know, I just keep an idea of someone in my head and I create for that person. It's really easy because I create everything for me. So hmm. it, that's my easy <laughs> answer to that. <laughs> if you want to attract a whole lot of people like you, that's the easiest way to go. But that's, that's what marketing really is. It's about improving your odds, increasing your odds so that someone will pick up the book. And, um, that may be overly simplified uh, for some people, uh, or maybe there's, there's a lot more complexity to it, of course, because there's all these steps that you could take. You have to do the thing that works best for you. <laughs> yeah. You know, if Facebook is your jam, go, go Facebook it up and talk to people on Facebook. And the, the, the key here is to be a part of a community hmm. and be a part of the right community. Well, I think that's good advice because I think a lot of it, it is really, it starts with reframing this conversation. And I love to talk about platform because I think yeah. really what it is, is you connecting with the people who love what you do. Right. right. And that, and if you think of it that way, people are like, oh, that's not what I think of at all. Because, you know, I think sometimes it's this idea that you have to be everywhere on social media or you have someone for those people who listen, because I have some people who want to traditionally publish or are traditionally right, published. Right, right. And there's this idea that you have to build a platform. So it feels like a thing forced on you. But when you reframe it, it's really kind of awesome that we can connect with, you know, our readers, yeah. so like in a yeah. way we couldn't. And so I think thinking of marketing in that way is like a reframing of that too. And so right. it makes it accessible to people. And, you know, just a kind of nitty gritty question for you. What have you found success in? And obviously this isn't a formula, no formulas right. guys, but right. for your fiction audience, like where do they hang out? Cause I, I feel like I hear that this advice a lot, but I don't you know, necessarily know where to go or I hear people asking a lot, like where have you found for your fiction, like it's, kind of connecting with those readers? Yeah. It's, it's the interests that I follow. Okay. So, um, uh, I, I'm a big fan of Star Trek, for example. So I talk to a lot of people who are, who are fans of Star Trek. And some of my science fiction is very Star Trek-esque. So mm. uh, in the course of casual conversation, not me spamming this group that I'm part of on Facebook or or Google Hangouts or whatever, um, the or Google+. Plus. I You know, I don't actually use Google anything anymore, so I don't know what's <laughs> popular with the kids these days. But Google+, Facebook, Plus is not so popular with the kids these days. I, so I don't think fine. so. Um, Facebook is my, is kind of where I live. Uh, I, I'm on Twitter and I love Twitter and I tweet stuff constantly, but Facebook is where I'm live. We'll say, yeah. so I, I join groups on Facebook that are in line with my interests and I read articles, uh, that are in line with my interests and I jump into the comments every now mm -hmm. and then. And, you know, and over time you you start to connect with these people. The, the trick is always figuring out when it's right to say something about your work. Hmm. Um, yeah. Wattpad has actually been really interesting for me. I, I, uh, a, a fellow author and friend of mine, uh, is, has done very well on Wattpad. He's got like 30,000 followers on Wattpad, wow. which is incredible, but he doesn't know how to leverage that for book sales and that sort of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, look, if I had 30,000 followers on Wattpad, I definitely know how to leverage that for book sales. So I started posting some of my work on uh, Wattpad and I've got this, this growing little following, some of whom are just rabid fans. That's cool. So that's a, that's another place. I, I think 
it the the really cool thing and the tricky thing if you could pull this off this is this will work perfectly for building your platform but try to find a place where you can be a part of a community where the idea is centered around your work Hmm. and that's why i like medium okay which is i'm brand new on medium but i can already tell you that's that's my that's my territory right medium Wattpad, sites like that where you can share your work and a community builds around that. And and be active, by the way. Go out and read other people's stuff and comment because that will lead them back to you. And then you you get this sort of synergy going and eventually you've got a platform. And that's that's probably the only thing that comes close to a formula that I could recommend is, you know, because everyone tells you you can go on Facebook and join communities, but they don't ever connect that to how you start talking about your work. Yes, <laughs> yes. Or and people just do it. I see most authors doing it wrong. Like I, yeah, as a moderator yeah. of a Facebook group and my Facebook community, hey guys, you guys are awesome and it's fantastic. But often I'll have people come in and I have to kind of train them. And yeah. usually they don't stay. Like I had a girl come in to the group and I added her and within 30 seconds she'd posted this really long blurb and a uh, link to her book. And yeah. obviously she was just copying and pasting. Like, there's no way she could have even written it in the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so I, you know, I sent her a message and then deleted the post and said, Hey, I just deleted your post. Here's why, you know, welcome to the group, but here's kind of how we operate. And and, yeah. um, and also that's really a terrible marketing strategy, by the way. I said it a little right. nicer yeah. than that. So she said, Oh, okay, so sorry. You know, that's great to know. And then the next day she posted literally the exact same thing again in yeah. the group. And I deleted it. And I went in and messaged her again. I said, hey, you know, we talked about this. Like, I can still see the thread right here. And her response was, um, oh, I just forget which groups I've already posted to. And so yeah. obviously her strategy is join as many groups as possible, copy and paste links. Yeah. And, and I kind of tried to start a conversation and she just wouldn't wouldn't. And I just said, yeah. you know, this is not, can, can we talk? I'd love to help you with strategy. This is not one that will sell books. Right. You know, I'd love to help you. That's what my group is about. If you want to stay and she left the group and I guess is still out there <laughs> copying and pasting yeah. in Facebook groups. And that's well, not the if, way to do it. If that, but if somehow that is, I don't see how, I honestly don't see how, but if yeah. somehow that's working for her, then that's what she's going to do until it no longer works, I guess. Yeah. But I think it was probably more of, this is the advice people get or yeah. If you, if you join an author group, because I've joined, I like to join groups and just see what's happening. Yeah. And a lot of the groups that are for authors are just authors dropping links. And so I think people have been trained by seeing this that, oh, this is what the author groups are doing. This is what we do. This is how we right. market. No one's even liking or commenting. Right. It's just link, 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 nothing happening. I don't understand why you would join an author's group and then post about your your fiction yep. or, or, you know, your, your books, because that what's... You okay? Authors are readers, and I I I agree that you can advertise to authors, you know. But the that idea is like, why? Yeah. What's the point? Yeah. <laughs> that isn't necessarily your audience. Well, whatever. We, can... <laughs> we know that, and it's hard to convey. We are that. now conveying it. So if you're yeah. out there listening, don't be ashamed. We're just conveying <laughs> this for you. That's not the way to do it. You don't want to market necessarily to other authors. So it's helpful to have like a little mastermind or tribe of people helping each other. But those groups are not that where you just go drop links, and it's not effective. So I like the specific advice that you gave in some of the ways. I think this will be helpful for people. Maybe, you know, thinking about new places they haven't thought of or even, um, you know, platforms that aren't just the norm, you know, thinking about something like Medium or yeah. I, I'm I'm terrified of Reddit because I think they would eat me alive. But I know some people who enjoy yeah. things like Reddit and there are sites like Elo still up and Tumblr that I just right, right. look at them and I think that's interesting. And, <laughs> you know, I'm not going there, but that may be where your audience is. And if it's a platform that you love, then, you know, go find where people are that would want to read your stuff, you know, and try to connect with those groups right. authentically. So um, I love your advice. And I think we're kind of on the same page. So hopefully, if there are any people out there that have been un- unknowingly, poorly marketing by <laughs> dropping links everywhere, they can <laughs> uh, amend their ways and actually find some real readers. Exactly. Yes. Well, Kevin, thank you so much for this time, especially with uh, things like mic drops, which are edited out and babies in the middle of interviews. Um, <laughs> this has really been wonderful and covered so many questions that I'm hearing constantly in my Facebook group um, and and just everywhere, really. Uh, so I appreciate you spending the time and I'm glad that people um, have gotten to hear you. So where can they connect with you and find you online? Okay. Um, all right. For Draft to Digital, of course, it's Draft to Digital, Draft number two, 
digital.com. Uh, that's the very fir- first place I would recommend going if you're an author who has not already gone wide. Uh, go check it out and ask any questions you want. Um, the whole staff will answer. I mean, there, someone is there to answer. Uh, you can find more about me at kevintumlinson.com. You can ask me too. And I, I always, t- I, you know, I try to tell people I'm a, I'm an email away. I'm mm. a call away. Just, you know, I will, if I don't know the answer, I probably know someone who does know the answer. I will help you somehow. And so feel free to reach out. And, uh, I do love helping authors. So it's a weird thing to have a passion for helping authors. No, I think that's great. I mean, I think it, it shows like empathy, like you're in that boat and you're also, you know what it's like. Yeah, and so yeah. you can help people because you know what a difficult thing it can be. And also, I mean, I love that too. I love to see other people succeed and have them, you know, whether it's with writing or, um, you know, I deal with a lot of bloggers as well, like kind of seeing everybody mm-hmm. just finding their space and, and seeing success there. I think that is so cool and just really fun. So. No, if that's yeah. weird, that's weird for me too. So we're we're in that. It's a, it's it's the right kind of weird. <laughs> yes, now that not a book title, maybe a T-shirt. That's another yes, title. Yes, yeah, that's another Absolutely. book title. The well, right thank you so weird. much, Kevin. And um, again, Anytime. yeah, I really appreciate this. And if people want to have another podcast to listen to and talk about uh, and hear about authors and writing, you can head over to the Word Slinger podcast, and uh, you can. Follow yeah. and leave a rating and review because we were talking about how difficult that please is sometimes do. to get. So, yeah, please do. Yeah, I appreciate that. I did, and I am chagrined that I did not even think to plug my own. Well, guess podcast. what? I did it for you, so we're covered. What What is the world come to? <laughs> you have a lot of things to plug, so it's been plugged. <laughs> People are going to go listen. I know. I always feel bad. I'm just. Uh, I'm going to be one of those like uh, at the end of the uh, spot. There's this ram that rambling high speed guy who tells you all the things you need to know about you know Kevin Tomlinson. Here's yeah, you know what I'm I talking do. about like the disclaimers. Absolutely, <laughs> you don't need a disclaimer, but I will leave a bunch of links also okay. for people um, who can find the show notes and uh, yeah, it. go look you up and see all the different things that you're doing because uh, there are definitely a lot of them and they're worth checking out. Okay, as for your action items for today, hopefully you already are thinking about doing this, but if you are wanting to independently publish, whether you consider yourself a writer first or a blogger who wants to put out some books or just, you know, anyone, you're wanting to build your authority by writing books and having them out there, draft to digital. How easy is this? So that's on my action uh, list as well to go and just sign up, even if it's just for converting things, even if you're not going to have them be your aggregator and your distributor of your books, at least to use that conversion tool, because I hear questions about that all the time. I also want you to go check out Kevin at kevintumlinson.com and listen to the Word Slinger podcast, which is great for author interviews and more with Kevin. So if you enjoyed his perspective and hearing from him today, go subscribe to the podcast. A few things that are coming up I am going to be doing some live workshops this month on email, and I've taken kind of the two big questions that people responded to me, and these aren't the only big questions because people have a lot of email questions, but one is growth. So we're going to talk about list growth, and that's going to be on January. Of course, I don't have the date in front of me because that's how I work, you guys. Let's see. I'm going to get there, and it's going to be tomorrow, really, from when this podcast goes out. Okay, so yeah, the 24th, there's going to be a list growth workshop, okay? And I'm not going to – I'm not going to fill it with – Anyway, it's going to be a little different than what you've heard before. I'm not going to, I'm going to cut through the fluff and the people that make a lot of promises. I'm going to help you grow your list, but not make a bunch of promises that only work for one kind of person. So if you are interested in this, you can go to creativewriting.com forward slash workshop. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually have, if you're listening to this months after January, anytime I have live workshops coming up, that's just going to be the registration page and I'll have to keep changing it out. So for now, you can go to creativewriting.com forward slash workshop and whatever workshops are coming up, you can sign up. But for this week on January 24th, it will be a list growth. And then I'm doing another one on the 31st. Now the 24th, the list growth, it's going to be totally pitch free. I'm not selling anything. I'm not going to talk about products. It's just going to be straight up teaching. And then on the 31st, we're going to do one on series and sequences. So how to do welcome series, how to set up a free course for your email list and autoresponder sequences as well. And that's going to be on the 31st. That's also the date I'm launching my course. It's really relaunching my email course, A to Z own your list. So I can't wait to talk to you guys about that. But if you know me and you'll know me, if you go to the 24th workshop, I am not 
all about the little bit of information and then a big pitch. I give a lot of information. And if you want my stuff, you'll know by the kind of information I get. So there will be a pitch on the 31st, but you can register for list growth. And if you're listening after the 24th has already taken place, if you still go to that same address, creativewriting.com forward slash workshop, you can sign up for the series and sequences or whatever workshop is coming up next. All right, go out, sign up for Draft to Digital. Check out the show notes and all the links, creativewriting.com forward slash 086. A big thank you again to ConvertKit. Get your free month at creativewriting.com forward slash ConvertKit. Thank you, as always, to Jasmine Commerce of jasminecommercemusic.com for the songs for this show. And I hope you have an inspired week.